This video will discuss the fabrication of custom trays. As seen in this illustration, the fabrication of custom trays is one of the many steps required to fabricate dentures. Custom impression trays are used to take the final impression from which the master casts are poured. Let's look at the process of creating custom trays. Custom impression trays can be fabricated from the diagnostic cast poured from the preliminary alginate impressions. They are made by adapting visible light cure material to the diagnostic casts. Custom trays will be utilized for capturing the final impressions of the edentulous arches. First, gather your needed materials as shown in this illustration. Next, demarcate the depth of the vestibule and the desired tray extension. Draw a red line at the depth of the vestibule to demarcate the final denture flange extension. The maxillary posterior limit is the line that crosses the palate at the vibrating line centered in the depth of the pterygo maxillary notches. The mandibular posterior limit is the line that covers each retromolar pad entirely beginning at a line drawn from the posterior limit and dropping approximately straight down to the depth of the vestibule. Next, measure and draw a blue line two millimeters above the red line to demarcate the custom tray extension. As a maxillary exception, the posterior border line overlaps the red line. And as a mandibular exception, the posterior border of the retromolar pad will overlap the blue line. Next, locate and block out undercuts on the diagnostic casts using pink baseplate wax by running a heated wax spatula with wax along them. The purpose of this is to prevent the cast from breaking due to undercuts when removing the custom trays from the casts. Common undercut locations include frena, the buccal surface of the tuberosities, prominent rugae, flabby portions of the alveolar ridges, and undercuts along the retromolar pad. Apply a lubricant such as Vaseline to the casts. Adapt one layer of wax over the diagnostic cast to create about one millimeter of tissue relief to allow for uniform space for the final impression material. Pass the wax sheet through the flame of the Bunsen burner until it is pliable. Adapt the softened wax sheet to the cast so that it is even without bubbles or irregularities. Remove gross excess with a hot wax instrument or scalpel up until the height of the blue line. If using the selective pressure technique, Choose locations for and create three to four tissue stops per arch on non-depressible areas by removing rectangular areas of base plate wax using a heated waxed instrument or scalpel. Tissue stops should be located in primary denture supporting areas. Note, the neater the rectangles, the better the tissue stops will be. Location options for tissue stops include the posterior hard palate, the alveolus, along the canine eminences and incisors in the mandible, and along the buccal shelf. Apply lubricant, such as Vaseline, uniformly onto the wax. Next, fabricate the tray with visible light cure material. Place extra VLC or VLC gel into the tissue rest holes. Seat the VLC on top of the wax and adapt it to the anatomy of the cast. As relevant, apply pressure over tissue stops to join the material together. Ensure that the VLC extends to the blue line on your cast. Trim away excess material that extends beyond the blue line with a scalpel. You may leave a small amount of material that extends beyond the blue line in order to leave space to create a smooth margin after curing. As a tip, save the excess material to make a handle in subsequent steps. So now you can create your handle using the remaining material. Firmly adapt the handle to the anterior portion of the tray. Note, there are several styles of handles. 
follow your instructor's preferences. Optionally, you may bend over the tip of the handle to create extra leverage. Sample dimensions of handles can be seen on the screen. Medial laterally, handles may be 10 to 15 millimeters wide, 22 to 25 millimeters high from the vestibule. Maxillary handles should be angled anteriorly 10 to 30 degrees from perpendicular to the crest of the ridge. Mandibular handles should extend perpendicular from the crest of the ridge and finger rest should be seen on the second premolar or molar area. Optionally, apply Vaseline to smooth the VLC and block out the palette on the maxillary tray using a 2x2 gauze or a piece of custom tray wrapper. Cure the VLC in a curing machine. For the maxillary tray, after one minute of curing, remove the palatal block out, press the palatal area down, and continue curing. For the maxillary and mandibular trays, after one minute of curing, run under cool water to prevent melting of the wax. Continue curing for two minutes or according to the manufacturer's instructions. Remove the tray from the curing machine and run under cold water. Separate the cast from the tray. Be careful not to break the cast. As a tip, disengage the tray from the cast by gently leveraging a hand instrument between the tray and the cast. If the wax does not cleanly separate from the cast, use boiling water or steam to remove the pink spacer wax from the intaglio surface of the tray. Another method is to keep the pink spacer wax in place until border molding is complete. We will explore this method in another video. Trim excess material that extends beyond the blue line and smoothen the edges of the tray. Use the straight, slow speed handpiece with acrylic burrs. Use a large, straight acrylic burr with a reverse pen grasp. Using a narrow burr, you may gouge the edge of the tray. Continually check the tray against the blue line on the cast to ensure that you do not over reduce the length of the tray. As a tip, run your finger along the edge of the tray to check for sharp areas. Continue smoothing until no sharp areas are detectable. As a clinical note, this is a very important step. You may tear the patient's vestibule when the trays are inserted if the edges are rough. Finally, you can check your custom tray against our checklist. Custom trays should be clean and neat, have smooth intaglio surfaces with no sharp tray edges, have a handle that is well polished, extend two millimeters above the depth of the vestibule, and optionally should have three to four tissue stops per arch. Thank you for learning with us and good luck on those dentures.